Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. The final NRC list released on the 31st of August ended up excluding just 19 lakh people, half of the draft list figure which was 40 lakh. This is less than 6% of those who applied. Arriving at this final number as contentious and disputed as it might be was anything but a simple task. It took a complex, exhaustive and detailed process spanning over six months involving thousands of workers, hundreds of workers and extensive hearings to arrive at this figure. It was a process of claims and objections that eventually told Assam it did not have 40 lakh suspected foreigners and that the figure was much lower. So what was this process about and what did it entail? Given the complexity and implications of this exercise, it was felt that an inbuilt design had to be provided for to ensure double checking and grievance redressal. This was the underlying mandate of the claims and objections process. Claims essentially meant that anybody left out of the draft lists could come forward to say they had been wrongfully excluded and ask for fresh verification. Objections meant that any individual could red flag someone's inclusion and demand re-verification. Of the around 40 lakh left out of the two draft lists, 36 lakh 26,630 people filed claims, of whom around 17 lakh were able to prove that their exclusion had indeed been incorrect. As for objections, around 2 lakh were received, of which a mere 700 odd were found to be correct. After the publication of the final draft in July 2018, work for the claims and objections stage began. A standard operating procedure was finalised on the 1st of November 2018 by the Office of the NRC Coordinator in consultation with the Supreme Court. Following this, capacity building and specific training of officials involved with the project started. Officials were trained to figure out documentation discrepancy and how to read the documents, what questions to ask the applicants and how to determine whether the case was genuine or not. It was after 15 February that the process of re-verification began. This exercise entailed rechecking of each document at the back end, but more importantly, taking this process to beyond paperwork and bring in an element of supporting evidence. For this, extensive hearings were conducted where family members were called to one spot as per specific slots allotted to them. Attempts were made by the disposing officer to determine a family tree. Hearings were conducted where more members of a particular descendant resided. This, however, meant several had to go through the inconvenience of travelling long distances at short notices to be able to make it for the hearing. All disposing officers had the necessary documentation and case history of each case on a computer screen in front of them. In all, around 3,500 disposing officers were at work. Each disposing officer had about two people for technical support and another two to three people who served as support staff, on an average. Besides them, around 25 to 30,000 staff was designated to physically deliver the letters which contained the date and place of hearing to each applicant who had filed for claims or objections. In all, around 40,000 workers were involved in the entire claims and objections process. Over 15 lakh hearings were conducted, with disposing officers working for an average of 10 hours a day, 5 days a week for 6 months. How correct is the final figure? Truth be told, there is no way to determine if the figure of 19.06 lakh is indeed correct. This has been the first of its kind exercise and given there is no prior benchmark to determine what the number of illegal immigrants would be, this remains the only conclusive, although now highly disputed, data. There is also no absolute basis yet to determine the religious breakup of those excluded, given the NRC application form did not ask for the applicant's religion. The immediate mandate for the Office of the NRC Coordinator may now be over, but work still remains. Each one of those excluded who want to appeal to the Foreigners' Tribunal will need to approach their local NRC office for an exclusion certificate on the basis of which they can approach the Tribunal. The NRC will also have to be regularly updated, much like the Division of Electoral Rules, to account for births, deaths, fresh migration and more. How often the list will be revised and what the modality would be is yet to be worked out. But given how controversial the entire exercise and specifically the final outcome has been, this is likely to be a bumpy road ahead. For The Print, this is Ruhi Tabari.